Welcome everyone to a new video in which I will show you how to host a live stream in your app and other people can watch it. And it's really simple and easy to implement because we'll use the Zigu Cloud SDK. And Zoo Cloud is a global communication service provider that provides us powerful yet friendly SDKs and APIs that we can use to integrate communication features in our app like video calling, voice calling, and in this case, live streaming. So we can literally host a live stream and then audience can watch it, interact with it, and so on. So here, as you can see, I have two apps, one for the host and one for the audience. And this is just because I don't have another Android phone to show you in two different devices. So I just installed the app twice with a different package name, but it's the same thing. So here in this Zigo host, I will host a live stream. And then in this app, I will watch it. And if you use the same package name, then you can install the app in two different devices. So the host has a device and then the audience has another device, but let's actually see it. So we go to the host to host a live stream. As you can see, here is my camera. Of course, you have to give it the camera permission at first. You can switch your camera. Here is my microphone arm, and then you can start a live stream. But before doing that, we can go to the audience app. As you can see, there is no live stream being hosted right now. So we can try doing that right here, and then we start a live stream. Now it is started. We can add comments in here. We can do anything, and we can then go right here to start watching it as you can see now we are in the live stream so two people are in the live stream who are the host and the audience and we can comment on it say hi for example if we go to the host app as you can see we have hi in here and then we can say okay or anything we can turn off the camera we can turn off the microphone or even let me just make this like this we can flip or switch the camera to the other one and if we go back here, we have a really great feature, which is requesting to be in the live stream by the audience. As you can see, apply to co-host. Now I did apply. If I go back to the host app, as you can see, someone wants to be in the live stream with me and then I can agree or disagree. If I agree and then I go here, I need to give the camera permission in the uh, audience app because I didn't do that and then the microphone permission as well. And as you can see, I am in the live stream. So two people in this live stream and I can, of course, quit. And here, if I go back, I can stop the live stream simply from the host app and that's it. So it's completely working with all the functionalities you need. And this is great if you want to have a social networking app in which you want to have a live streaming feature. And here is the Cloud website, which provides us with the SDK that we'll be using. And if we go down here, we see that a lot of apps with millions of users are already using this SDK exactly. And we have a lot of things like video calling, voice calling, live streaming, which is what we want. Now, the first thing you want to do is to actually create an account. If you don't have one, you can come here and then fill these fields with your information really easy and then start your free trial if you don't want to pay but if you of course pay you get even more advantages now what i'm going to do is to log in since i already have an account and here i'm logged in and as you can see i have free 10,000 minutes that i can use in my app for video calling and live streaming and so on so they are completely free and of course if you pay you get more but what i'm going to do here is to create a project that's what we need first so let's go here and we can choose anything that we want from video calling to in-app chat and so on. What we want here is to use live streaming and then click next. And we can see that we get two different SDKs that we can use, which are the UI kits and SDKs. And with UI kits, we can integrate this feature with very few lines of code and use the pre-built UI in this kit. Now, if we want some more low-level SDK in which we can build our own UI and control everything, then we can use this one. If you want to go for low-level development, you can choose this one. If not, choose UI kits. Now, that's what I'm going to do. And then it's just say here in the app name, YouTube Live, for example start with your eye kit and it will create an account for you and while we are waiting for it i want to do that if you want to become an industry level developer and build large-scale apps from the ground up with cater backends then check my premium course in the description that will make you exactly do that by using all the skills that you want to get a job or to be a freelancer like dependency injection clean architecture jitpack compose and so on you can find the link in the description if you are interested now the project is created let's start building we want to choose underweight for our case 
and here we can turn on or off this face beautification let's say we don't want that and then we start integrate now what we get in here is an up id and an up sign you don't want to show these to anyone they are a secret and these are what we need to actually host and watch our live streams we can go to the admin console and let's go to our app and if you want to activate more features in your app like video calling and in app chat and so on you can just come here and then activate them let's just say with live stream in this case and let's go to the documentation i will leave you this website's link in the uh, description and i will also leave you the documentation link in the description we want to come here to start building we first of all need to add these two in our settings.gradle file of course these are not in kotlin so i will just show you how to add them in kotlin because our gradle is in kotlin so we want to come here and paste these two lines which are exactly these lines but in kotlin and then let's scroll down where we want to add this dependency to our gradle file so let's go here and then we want to add it since we use a uh, version catalogs so we want to add it in our libsoft versions and we can of course also update our kotlin version and our compose build of materials so here is the dependency for the version it's going to be just this even if it's size plus but it's actually just working fine and then we want to go to our build.gradle to have that dependency in our dependencies implementation and here it is actually one more thing we need is the json library for this to be working even though it's not in the documentation but it's needed so let me just show you how to add it like this and then paste it here we need the version and here is the version so we need this JSON library as well, which is what we need to add in our Gradle file. Like this, and then sync your project. So these are the only two libraries that we need. And then let's go to start building. But before doing that, since actually the UI kit starts a new fragment for the live streaming, we need a little bit of a different theme for that fragment. And this is because we are using the UI kits. If you are using the low level SDK, then definitely you don't need all of this. You can integrate your own UI. And for this, this is the theme that we need. Day night, no action bar theme. Now we want to add the internet permission in our manifest, since definitely we use internet for this. And then we want to start building. So let's go to our main activity. And as I said, since this launches a new fragment, we want to switch the component activity to a fragment activity. And don't worry because fragment activity eventually implements component activity. So that's the exact same thing. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually remove this greatening composable and also remove it from here. And let's go here to add some fields that we need. First of all, we need a user ID. So var user ID that is going to be a string so let's start with the host and of course in your case if you want live streaming then you definitely have some sort of a backend like firebase or so then the user id will be your firebase user id something like that so we need the user id and then we need the username so let's say also host for that actually username right here and then we want to tell whether this is hosting the live stream or not so let's say is a host and then in this case let's say true since we are hosting the live stream and then one last thing we need is the live id so live id let's say one two three and as i said all of these needs to be controlled in your backend to actually have these values now i'm just hard coding them because i don't have any backend and now what we need to get this live stream working is an app id so val app id and that is going to be a long so i'm going to add it later so one l to just not have an error and then we need an app sign this is going to be a string and to get these you want to go to zigo cloud again so right here and here they are they said don't show these to anyone let me just copy it paste the app sign and then the app id here it is add an l because it's supposed to be a long and now if we go to the documentation again we can find that we have the code to do this but since we are using jetpack compose i'm just going to show you how to actually start a fragment in jetpack compose so here in our scaffold we want to have a configuration or config so var config that is going to be if is host because if this is hosting then we want to do something if not then we want to do a different thing we want to use zigo ui kits pre-built and then we want to go for the config here dot host 
and then say true since we are trying to host and then simply we want to copy this paste it here and then say audience in here and say true since this is now the audience if we are not hosting and to start a fragment we need a fragment manager so var fragment manager remember and then this admin activity dot support fragment manager i don't know why what's wrong with the auto completion but it's not working all right i want to import remember now and remember is imported and i want to create my fragments so first of all for that we need to create just fragment like this it is also going to be remember and then the fragment we want is zigo ui kit fragment dot new instance passing my config but not only the configuration let's import that there is something wrong with android studio it's not actually importing it just lags like this okay so it can't even find it okay here it is and android studio definitely has an issue however we need the config but before that we need the app id and then we need the app sign we then need the user id then the user name and the live id so like this these are the things that we need which are what we already defined right here now we want to start this fragment and we do that in jetpack compose using android view we want to give it a modifier and android studio has a problem that i don't understand we want to use a modifier dot finmax size and then give it a padding which is the inner padding then we want to go for factory we want a frame layout in it which is in this case the context so right here we get the context to start our frame layout in which we will have our uh, fragments so apply we say the id is going to be view dot generative view id and then the layout params is going to be view group dot layout params for the width and height it's going to be match parents like this and now in the update block in which we want to actually have our fragments inside this frame layout that we just created in here so update like this we want to have our fragment manager dot begin transaction and then instead of apply we want to use replace it dot id which is the view that we have in here and then we want to have a fragment and then dot commit and this fragment of course is our fragment and actually that's it and since i want to have this app twice in my phone i want to use a different package name and different name for every one of them so for this first package name we can also increase the uh, target sdk and compile sdk i'm going to have the host in this first one so let's go to strings and then just name it host so that i can differentiate between them and then i can run this app on my google pixel 7 so run that and let's have a look at it let's bring the emulator or the device here and here we want to choose of course the pixel 7 okay here is the app of course remember this is the host app i want to give it the camera and microphone permissions and i can immediately start a live stream let's now do that and switch here to the audience however it's spelled i don't know anyway i want to change the package name a little bit to have a different name so you just add an extra m right here and then i want to come here and then here say this is the audience and here as well the audience and then is host false so in this other app i will actually be the audience not the host and i want to run it again but of course it will be a different app right now as you can see here it is it says no host is online i want to go to the other app which is the host app and then start live streaming just like this and i immediately already started watching as you can see here and if we check here the host and the audience are in this live stream i can comment with something for example like hi and then we should find that and it's just working all right with no problems i can turn off the camera if i don't want to and if i go back to the other uh, device as you can see the camera is also gone so it's completely working just fine and all of that using the powerful zigo cloud sdk to integrate this live streaming feature with very few lines of code with a lot of simplicity to integrate such a complex thing with very simple code 
and if you want to support me to make more videos like this don't forget to subscribe and leave a like in this video and share it with your friends tell them that they can implement live streaming in a very simple way and if you want to become ready for the android industry and get your dream job then check my premium course in the description that will teach you how to become a great developer by building an industry level app from the ground up with its own k backend now see you in the next video bye